Hi, this is Professor Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a stem cell and cancer researcher, but I also do a little bit of educational outreach. And part of that outreach is this series of videos I'm doing here on YouTube. So these videos, you'll, you can kind of scroll through our channel and see the different topics. They often relate to stem cells or cancer or CRISPR, uh, things along those lines, kind of fact checking things. And I've noticed that a certain cell line that I've used for almost 30 years as a researcher has been really in the news a lot. So I thought I would do a post on my blog about that and also a video about it. And these cells are called 293 cells. And they're in the news because they're related to COVID-19 vaccine production. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. So it's really important to go ahead and fact check that. So what I'm gonna do is go through a post I've done about 293 cells with you here in this video. And that way I can kind of answer your questions and, and kind of raise important points about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we can again, kind of go through this post. So here's my site, The Niche, it's at ipsl.com. And it has a number of different resources for patients and scientists like stem cell videos like this one uh, and the blog. And uh, so check it out again, ipsl.com. But let's uh, zoom in on these 293 cells. And so here's the actual article and uh, you can kind of go through it. You can read it. I've got the link there in the uh, post, uh, the video description uh, for the post. So check that out if you want to read it as well. So I thought I'd start by just sort of telling you a little bit about how we so-called culture cells in the lab. That's what we call it when we grow different kinds of cells in the lab. It's called either cell culture or tissue culture. We're growing cells in little dishes. And I've got one of these as an example here. And so oftentimes uh, we'll grow, each of these little wells can grow different cells. This is, would be sterile when we use it in the lab. And so uh, we also often name like the rows and columns like ABC, one, two, three, four. And some of these are actually big enough. They have like 96 or even more than 300 of these little individual wells, each of which can have different kinds of cells in them. So um, some of the cells we grow in my own lab right now include 293 cells and they might be growing in these little wells and there might be one kind of 293 cells here and another kind here. So I'll come back to this uh, well in a minute. So cells are isolated from different tissues, like maybe tumors or uh, tissue samples, and then uh, we can grow them in the lab. Sometimes they get their names from these actual dishes. And so like uh, you can see, I've, I've got um, A, B, C, one, two, three. So like cells growing in a certain well, we might just call them like B4 cells. And if that catches on, they could just be called that or A, A96 cells or things like that. So that's sometimes where their names come from. Sometimes their names come from patients if the tissue sample uh, came from a patient, although that's not something we see as often before, but that might come to mind for these uh, other cells called HeLa cells named after Henrietta Lacks. You can see how even using a patient's initial sometimes uh, could be an issue in terms of privacy. So it's important to kind of uh, point out there are two main uh, types of cells that we grow in the lab. One type are called primary cells. And so these, you know, these might be like, boop, a skin biopsy from me, we put in a dish. If there's no pathogens in there, we might be able to grow out a skin uh, cell culture from those for a few weeks. Those are primary cells, they're normal. Um, they don't last very long. Um, so it's sort of pros and cons. The pro is that these are normal cells. The con is that, you can't really grow them for more than a few weeks. Um, the other main kind of cells that we grow in the lab are called cell lines. And so these are immortal and they can grow forever. And you can see how that would be useful, right? You don't have to worry about them kind of pooping out after a couple of weeks, um, but they're not entirely normal. They're not normal in the sense of like those primary cells, um, which could be blood cells or skin cells, like I said. So if we wanted to make a cell line, an immortal line, say from uh, a skin biopsy, uh, sometimes the cells will just spontaneously immortalize. They'll acquire a mutation in the dish in the lab. But other times we actually put in cancer-related genes called oncogenes that basically make those cells immortal. And that way we can use them again, basically forever. So uh, just with that background, now let's talk a little bit more about the 293 cells uh, themselves. So sometimes these cells are also called HEC cells or HEC 293 cells. The HEC acronym means human embryonic kidney. And so that is kind of reflective of the source of these uh, cells. They actually came from a fetus from the kidney and uh, were grown in the lab. They were first grown in 1973. So again, you can see um, that's what, like almost 50 years ago, those were immortal cells. They still are immortal cells. Uh, 
And the lab that first made them actually had to make them immortal by putting in some viral sequences that um, made those cells grow forever. So these cells have been around a really long time. I go through in this post, the first paper I found describing these cells. So again, check it out uh, at ipscell.com if, um, if you wanna dig in and get to that paper and look at it. It's actually kind of interesting for me as a scientist looking at uh, how papers were written way back then, things were a little bit different. So that, that, that's kind of fun to go back and look at old papers. Uh, so, so part of the reason why 293 cells are so much in the media and headlines is because they came from a human fetus, right? And so the, the human embryonic kidney name kind of um, alludes to that. So it turns out the researchers who made um, the 293 cells in the first place, I don't know that they have clear records on that. And so we don't really know if that fetus was from a spontaneous miscarriage or an abortion. Nonetheless, because they came from a fetus, some people feel uncomfortable um, about those cells or feel that there's some issue with using 293 cells to make COVID vaccines. I personally don't see it as, as a big issue. Um, these are you know, immortal cells uh, that have come along almost 50 years, like I said. But, um, but I think you know, there, there has been some discussion about this, but, but we wanna have like an informed discussion where we know, you know the facts about these things. So why do we even use these 293 cells in research? It turns out that they're really useful in a number of ways. They grow very fast. So if you have, let's say, a million of these cells, um, you know, within a few weeks, you might be able to have hundreds of millions of these cells. So they grow very quickly. Also, when we put genes into them, and there are different ways we can do that, and, and sometimes that's called transfection, um, they just will make a ton of protein from those genes. And so that's really useful as well. So they're, they're almost kind of like little protein making factories uh, that we can make in the lab. They're also really great at making viruses. So you can see how uh, if we introduce different genes for viruses into these cells and they crank out a bunch of virus that can be used for a lot of different research. It can be used for uh, helping vaccine production. So uh, in that sense, they're really useful cells uh, because of these unique attributes. I'm gonna just scroll back up here and actually show you the cells themselves. So here's a picture uh, of some cells, probably from one of these dishes or from another larger round dish from my lab of 293 cells. So each of the little sort of, they almost look like little uh, balloons here are individual 293 cells. So these are the embryonic kidney cells. Sometimes they'll grow in clusters. Sometimes they look more round, sometimes they look more spindly, but this is kind of what they look like. And so here on here, we probably have hundreds of these cells uh, in uh, just one of the wells of one of these smaller plates. Um, we might have tens or hundreds of thousands of cells. And sometimes we use larger dishes that are as large as like 15 centimeters. There we might have tens of millions of these cells. And again, they can act as like little protein factories if we put genes into them and they secrete stuff into their media, or we can isolate the cells themselves and extract proteins from them. So again, super useful cells in, in many different ways. So that's what these cells are. I talked a little bit about how we use them in research to make proteins, to make viruses, to study the functions of those proteins. Uh, I myself first used these cells almost 30 years ago, back when I was a graduate student at UC San Diego uh, School of Medicine. And again, I use them to try to produce proteins, study the functions of different proteins. So I've been studying, uh, doing research, studying different things in these cells again for a really long time. I've gotten to know them very well. And they're just a super useful tool. I think it's probably true that hundreds or thousands of research labs around the world uh, use these cells. They've been used in ways that probably have saved many lives, even if you set aside the whole COVID arena where again, uh, helping produce the vaccines has certainly saved a huge number of lives. So there's a couple of areas where things have gotten kind of confused with 293 cells and COVID-19. And so I think one thing to just make definitely uh, super clear is that when one gets a COVID vaccine, there are no 293 cells in the vaccine. So you're not getting uh, injection of actual cells. There's just other stuff in there like RNA. Um, so no, there's no actual 293 cells in the vaccines. Also something to clear up is that 293 cells are not stem cells. They're embryonic kidney cells. Um, they're more like what we call epithelial cells. Um, so, so they're not the, the kind of stem cell type cells that we sometimes have seen uh, people sort of getting things confused about, oh, you know, Maybe someone is, is raising a question about COVID vaccines because 
they think they were produced using 293 stem cells, but they're not really stem cells, they're not embryonic stem cells. Uh, so we would definitely want to uh, make sure that that's cleared up as well. So no stem cells in the vaccine, no cells in the vaccine, and no, these are not actually stem cells, they're just uh, kidney cells as well. So really important to think about that. And then finally, I uh, just want to point out more than 50,000 publications of different scientific research have used 293 cells. Again, I think they've saved a lot of lives. They're going to continue to help save lives. There may be other cells that can do similar things to 293 cells. But um, so far, I haven't really heard of other cells that are just as good as these. Uh, but hopefully this video has kind of cleared up some of the misinformation out there. And now you have a better understanding of what 293 cells are all about. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, check out some of the other videos, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.